Howdy there, folks. It's the end of the month, so as always, we've just had a new Thursday development blog post dropped as of July 25th, 2024. And as such, I'll be taking a look at everything we know from this update, summarizing what you need to learn, and showcasing the pictures and footage we got from the blog in this video. There is a link to the full blog post in the description of this video if you'd still like to dive in after watching. And don't forget, I do this every month alongside a bunch of other content from tips, mod videos, and even videos on other games here and there, so feel free to like and subscribe for more. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the Thursdoid for July 25th. Now, this blog opens up with a pretty lengthy section giving us a bullet point update of what's going on with the crafting overhaul right now, and I'm conscious we've all heard a lot about that in recent months, so I'm going to come back to this at the end of the video and start with the next section, that being some ongoing work with implementing basements to areas of the map. If you're not aware already, or you've just forgotten, the majority of basements will be randomly occurring, so they're different on every single run, but some key locations will have static basement spawns that are always the same. These will generally be at points of interest, like say police stations or town halls, for example. The static locations might include bunkers, tunnels, and cave networks, according to the developers in this dev blog, as well as some new, more simplified lower floors to existing areas we're already used to. The developers have been going through areas of the map marking up locations for these new basements, and while they don't want to spoil too much, they have given us a look at one of the brand new locations called Brandenburg and all of the basements that will come with it. For those unfamiliar, I believe this is the currently unfinished area of the map that we can visit right now, where there's a large riverboat docked nearby. Most of the town is currently unfinished, but in this image it's looking like it's coming along pretty nicely, although the devs don't really talk about that here. I don't want to dig into what locations we can see on this map too much, because I'd really just be speculating, but it's nice to see some of the map work is actually starting to result in fully finished towns. We're then shown a snippet of footage which essentially showcases how a single location can have different basements on different playthroughs. The developers note here that the basements aren't particularly exciting, but that it should give us an idea of what to expect and shows the tech ability to match random basement orientation to the size of the building. Okay, so next up is another look at Grapple Tech, which if you're unfamiliar was animation tech that's in development at the moment, allowing two characters to interact with one another in a single animation, whether that be player to player or zombie to player. The first use for this is the disposal of bodies, which we saw some footage for previously, but in this dev blog we specifically get a look at something currently only a mod provides, and that's the dumping of bodies through windows. I'll let this clip play without my voiceover for a moment, but the developers do make a couple of notes here. First, that they are aware that after the body has been thrown from the window, the plummet of the corpse doesn't look great just yet, and this will be addressed in future. And they also note that they are aware the effort sounds from the character are a bit much here and will be considerably toned down. This is just for an example of the audio in use. <laughs> Finally, the team close out this segment about Grapple Tech by noting that they previously had said Grapple Tech won't be in the unstable branch of Build 42, but now that it's actually pretty much done, they feel it is a potential candidate for addition. The eagle-eyed players amongst you will have recognized the house from the last clip as Kate and Bob's safe house, and the devs give us another quick look at the lighting system while we're in the area, showing the safe house both during the daytime and at night, with some new streetlights in play. In other news, quite literally, in fact, the various newspaper articles coming to the game in Build 42 have now been finalised and have been checked through for authenticity by a local American news journalist. All that remains now is to add them to the game's loot tables once some edits have been made following feedback. We get another little clip here of a wandering survivor picking up one of these new papers in a local gas station, showcasing some of the work with animators to design images for the newspapers themselves. 
Okay, so just a couple of loose bits to wrap up before we get into that rather chunky crafting segment. First up, the team share that they weren't particularly happy with the way deer, planned for build 42, were following predefined set paths through forests. With the biome and zoning work for foraging now complete, as we saw in the last dev blog, the team have decided to begin work on a system that will create multiple pathways for wildlife organically. This is being completed alongside general polish for wildlife migration and should make for a more engaging experience according to the dev team. Now if I'm being completely 100% honest here, I don't necessarily think starting new work right now when there's still stuff to be done in this area to get build 42 out of the door is a great idea, but that's just my opinion and I'm in agreement it will make for a better feature in the long run. Next, the sound team has been busy building specific room tones and one shots. Before, this was limited to about 7 to 8 room tone parameter values, but now they have a choice of up to 260 different ambience and reverb settings, which should make for more immersive experiences in larger, more unique buildings like, say, movie theatres, churches, or cave systems. And last of this section, but by certainly no means least, the team have continued their glow up of Muldraw in the map design department and we're lucky enough to see a bit of more footage from this as well, specifically including some nighttime shots with new lighting in play. Honestly, some awesome work is being done in this area and I'm really looking forward to exploring Muldraw after the updates. Alright, so that's everything except for the big chunk of crafting information in this dev blog. Now, this section was pretty lengthy, as I mentioned earlier, so buckle in and get comfortable. So the very first thing the developers mention here is that they've been busy onboarding three new friends that have come over from TEA Games to add some additional firepower to the crafting work that's currently ongoing, with the aim of getting it out the door sooner rather than later. These three individuals are also documenting as they go, which will then become guidance for modders upon Upon release. Next, we get some extra pictures here of some of the work ongoing for crafting station animations. The devs state that in build 42, we won't see direct physical movement of the player and crafting stations when we interact with them. The example given being that a potter's wheel won't spin when being used, but that there will be player actions towards the crafting station. This will be accompanied by sound effects and some visuals indicating the station is being worked at, such as, say, a furnace glowing red hot when in use. The team have also spent some time working out how best to separate their new skills for crafting, and we get a look at a new list here that seems to show these off as they'll look in build 42. Now, personally I think this UI is going to need a bit of a facelift with all these new skills coming into play, or at least a way to indicate clearer which skill is assigned to which progression bar, because right now there's a bunch more and I can see all of this blurring together a little. Either way, cool to see and hopefully some further improvements to come. The team do know that it won't be a necessity necessity for players to dedicate time and effort to some of these skills for the average playthrough, only if they are trying to make a civilization on a forest map or in strict survival scenarios. On the flip side, sandbox settings have been added to cater for faster progression. These now contain skill XP multipliers for individual skills, so your speed progressing each skill can be tuned individually rather than the whole set. The next part is a particularly big one for me, and I know it'll be a massive thing for anyone that's played multiplayer player extensively as well. In build 42, scrapping, dismantling or ripping items will no longer grant XP. This will encourage the player to make things rather than destroy them and in multiplayer environments it will avoid the issue that so many servers have where entire towns are demolished in the name of gaining carpentry XP. Just a friendly reminder for all the people that do this, you can gain carpentry XP by sawing logs, making spears, building floors and you won't need to destroy anything. Stop it. Yes you. Stop. The developers have also increased the XP gains for building structures and repairing clothing, for example, to accommodate for this change. The individual XP multipliers will further help with balancing this. Some of you folks may have already noticed that napping and carving were added to the skill list image shown earlier, which the devs clarify in the next section will add the ability to fashion stone blades from pieces of flint for the purpose of knives, spears, axes and other tools. Carving, on the other hand, refers to fashioning wood or bone into tools for a similar purpose. Some carving actions will also produce decorative items, especially at lower levels, for either aesthetic or artistic purposes. This should give the player 
prefer something to craft for XP gains rather than working on making a sharp stick many times over. Lastly, the team mentioned they've improved how recipes work and how we learn them. There are a ton of recipes coming to build 42 and the team mentioned that say you reach level 10 blacksmithing, it makes no sense for a master of that craft not knowing the basic recipes. As such, many recipes now come with an auto learn requirement. Essentially, if you reach a designated level, you'll learn these recipes automatically. They've also noted that some recipes will now be diagram based so that illiterate characters can still learn recipes just so they reduced frequency. Okay, so that wraps up the lengthy crafting segment of this dev blog, and that's everything you'll need to know from this Thursdoid. Still no sign of a release date just yet, and to be honest, I wouldn't expect one up until very close to when the devs actually plan to release the update, but we're still set to see something this year. Quick reminder, there's a link to this dev blog in full in the description, and a quick thank you to all of the kind folks among you that have been over to the VOD channel and subscribed or watched some of the VODs from my live streams that are already on that channel. We've just hit monetization requirements so I can now start earning from those videos so that's pretty cool and it's all down to you guys. If you want to check out the VOD channel there's a link in the description for that as well. Lastly a very special thank you as always to my Patreon subscribers for supporting the channel for just £3 a month. Thanks everyone and I will see you all in the next one.